Hello and welcome to day 16. I need to check my dates. I think it's day 16 of Vlogmas and I'm going to talk to you about candles. In fact, broken candles and I don't know whether this happens to you but I've bought a pack of about 20 candles and then I dropped them on the floor and these six of them are broken. So that one is definitely broken. Some of them look real but when I wobble them, shake them, I can hear that they are starting to crack and just really easily are going to snap in half. So I'm thinking, what can I do with these? Rather than just chucking them away, I thought perhaps I will properly break them in half and put them in a pot, melt them slowly in the oven and then pour them to make new candles. So carry on and watch to the end of the video and I'll show you whether I've successfully melted these candles down or whether it was all a total waste of time. I quite enjoy this bit, snapping up my old candles. And what I've got here is a heat proof container, this huge tin can. I've got a baking sheet and I'm going to put some water inside the baking sheet and then put the broken up candles into the pot and put my oven on low and melt them. You could do this on the stove, but what I've found that even if you keep an eye on things, that the wax just bubbles up a little bit. So it's like when you, you know, you'd frying eggs and you've got loads of oil in your frying pan and you get splatters everywhere. And I just think this will be a much cleaner way of melting the candles down. And because water boils, if I was going to do this on the stove, I would boil the water in a saucepan and sit the can inside. So I'm thinking a low heat for the oven. So I'm going to aim for 100 degrees on my oven and then just monitor it. So I'll probably set my timer for, I don't know, probably 10 minutes to begin with, just so I can see what's happening. And then as time goes on, it, I may set it for a longer period of time. I'm thinking possibly this might be a slow watch and wait. I just want them to melt slowly without making a total mess of my kitchen. This is going to be a case of here's one I've done earlier. I picked up this metal teapot from a charity shop ages ago and I have melted some wax in here and these candles actually were white candles so my candles I'm going to re-pour aren't going to have the pinky tinge, or at least the ones I'm going to do today aren't going to have the pinky tinge. And I've been saving containers so again a charity shop find I reckon this was a a candle jar. It's got a really thick base. I know that this has previously had a candle in because my sister gifted it for me for Christmas. She'd made a pan candle making kit and this heavy bottomed glass jar is actually something some cosmetics came in. I think it was from Neil's yard originally. And then in terms of specialist ingredients, I have bought online these wicks and I have also bought this, came with this little device and once you've got the wick in the jar, you can hold it up there and it won't fall over. A very handy device. I'm slightly concerned that I've got um, burnt wick melting around there and also the wicks inside the candle. So I'm trying to see whether I can strain the candle wax as I pour it in order all the gunky bits and the old wicks um, a caught in here rather than going into the candle. Then the only other thing I'm going to do is to get some of my essential oils and flavour them up, some for Christmas, and then because we don't burn candles that often at home, I'm going to put in some more year-round fragrances as well. So here goes, just trying to make sure I don't burn myself. So the first thing I'm going to do is to open the pot and use the melted wax as sort of glue for attaching my wick to the bottom of the container. Get it to stand up and then start to pour. Oh, I was going to do it through the strainer. Thank you. 
and then to add in some of my festive fragrances. So I've got marjoram, frankincense and pine needle oil. You notice that my candle wax in here isn't pure white and that's because some of my burnt wicks were in the melted mix. So they've discoloured it a little bit. So perhaps actually the red candles I showed you earlier might give a prettier finish. So let's carry on and fill another one of the containers. So dipping my, in my wick and get that to stick. doesn't want to. I'm just going to pour a, a dribble in there. I've only got one of these. I guess if you were into candle making you'd have to have more of these on the go. So without knocking that first one. Just wondering whether that's cool enough for me to hold now and then pour in the wax. So far I haven't caught any stray bits of wick or sooty wick in my tea strainer. So perhaps those bits are all at the bottom. I'm going to get a production line ready and start melting these red candles. They're white inside so it's just going to leave a pinkish tinge which I think is going to make a better colour than the dingy white I've ended up with from my white candles. Into the water bath, onto the middle shelf. And I'm going to set the timer for 30 minutes. Now candle pouring is obviously a skill, so all I've done here is just pour it carefully into the pot. And when the candle wax cooled, I was left with a little bit of a dip. So with the melted red wax from my colour candles, I've topped off with a little red topping. And as that's cooling, it's going to a slightly lighter pink. But I may not be perfect, but it's a really good way of using up those candle ends, which otherwise I probably would have thrown away. If you decide to give this project a go, I'd love to know how you get on. And perhaps if you've got any tips for me, you'd be gracious enough to share them in the comments. That's all for me for now, and I'll see you again tomorrow.